This is lesson two in our tutorials about Adobe Illustrator. In this lesson, we're going to work with the uh, uh, rectangle and ellipses tool. We'll be experimenting with how to use color and we'll create some complex shapes. Now, all of these tools, the, the pen tool, the ellipse tool, the rectangle tool, have one thing in common, and that is if you want to draw a perfect square, a perfect circle, a perfectly horizontal or vertical line, you will hold the shift key down. So last time we saw how we can drag, uh, click and drag, holding the mouse key down while we drag, uh, and create rectangles with various aspect ratios. If we hold the shift key down, we can only draw a perfect square. And uh, you'll notice that I drew this square on top of the other rectangle, and now they're overlapping, and uh, we uh, cannot see what's behind this one. We can remove the fill with by clicking the None icon, and now you see you can see through that shape. Or we can select it again using our selection tool, and add a fill to it. We can add the fill over here on the color palette. Uh, you can also add it down here. Whatever the last fill was will be down here on your tool palette. We can slide this around using our selection tool anywhere we want. We can select multiple objects by dragging across them with the selection tool and we can then delete them. Let's go back to our rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a square, but this time instead of uh, clicking and dragging with the shift key down, I'm going to just click. And you'll see you get a dialog box that allows you to draw uh, a shape to a precise size. So let's make ours 300 by 300, and there's our square. So to review, the shift key allows you to draw perfect squares and you can also just click and you'll get the last, whatever the last uh, measurements were and you can create a square wherever you want. Use your selection tool then to move those around. I'm going to delete this square and I'm going to show you another feature of the interface and that's the rulers and how to make ruler guides. Uh, to to do this, we have to first of all go to the View menu to our Rulers and Show Rulers. It's also Command-R. The rulers are on the edges here and they allow us to place things precisely uh, on, the, uh, on the document. And also we can draw, dr go up here with our Selection tool and click and drag for a ruler guide. Now, you notice I still have my square selected, so if I go down here, it will snap into place right on the center of that square, which is what I want to do here. If I go to this one, I can do the same thing. And now I have guides there to serve as a reference point for other things I do. This is, in fact, what we would call a rudimentary grid. Any composition need some sort of vertical and horizontal reference points uh, to start your composition and keep it um, well organized on your page. I'm going to show you another feature now of the rectangle tool and also the ellipse tool. Remember we held the shift key to draw a perfect circle or a perfect square. We also can hold the option key down. You see the change in the cursor. And the option key allows us to draw from the center out. So this is very handy if you have a point like this and you want to create another circle or square right inside it. I'm going to hold the shift key down and the option key down both and then drag and you see I get a perfect square from the inside out. Now also I can do it this way. I can just click and uh, I had 300 uh, for my original square, so I'm going to make this one 200, like so. And um, you notice it did not center on there because I did not hold the option key down. Let's delete this one, hold the option key down, and click. 
and now it forms it from the center out. So you have to be aware of that. Let's make both of these squares the same color. And uh, they already are, but but let's make them a different color. I'm going to get going to get my selection tool again. And I'm going to drag across both of them. This allows me to change the color uh, globally for both of them. I'm going to first of all go to my stroke and I'm going to turn my stroke off. I'm going to use this, the none uh, box. See there's one here and one on your tool palette down here. So there's no stroke. Then I'm going to click on my fill and give it a nice red color. I can do this by clicking anywhere on my spectrum. I also can put in colors here magenta and yellow to get uh, a process what we call process red so we'll go with that all right now it looks like one shape but if I drag across it again I see I have two shapes and what if I want to make it so that it's like a donut so this in the middle is transparent I go up to my object menu now remember I have both squares selected and I go to compound path make and now we have a what looks like a a shape that you can see through okay let's try that again use my rectangle tool I'm holding my option key down and I'm going to make this one 100 in both directions and now I'll click, hold the option key down, click in the center again, and make this one 50, like so. I'm going to use my selection tool, but this time rather than dragging across, I'm going to hold the shift key down and select both of them. Click on one, first one and then the other. Object, compound path and now we have another donut. Now let me show you something here. If I use my selection tool to slide this around you see we can in fact see through it. I can also change the color of this one and this is a very powerful uh, way of creating shapes. I also can move this back here and center it. So that's the rectangle tool and we can do the same thing with the ellipses tool. Click and hold and um, I'm going to move these out of the way here momentarily. I can click, hold the option key, click, put my dimensions in, do the same thing again, select both, object, compound path, and again I have a donut shape that I can stack on top of other things. Now you notice that we can stack these things however we want. Like so. What if I wanted my red one in front? I go to the object menu to arrange bring to front or bring forward one shape at a time but you can arrange these so that they're layered in any order you want and that's an important thing for how you build your shapes okay in the next uh, lesson we'll start with the pen tool a really cool and amazing tool in Adobe Illustrator